Hey everybody, Tim from ModelKitReviews.com here again. Uh, back with another video uh, on the build of the High Grade Universal Century Gira Zulu. And what I want to talk about tonight is how to fix an issue that is becoming less common uh, in newer Gundam kits, but in high grade kits, uh, you can also, often you'll, you'll still find it. And that is the issue of hollow parts. Uh, parts that have, you know, that, that, that have a great looking front piece, but on the back it's uh, kind of nasty and you don't really want to see it. Um, one example would be this side skirt. Looks great, right? Turn it over. Bleh, it's just this nasty thing. Now in side skirt pieces you can kind of, you know, you can, fud you, you can fudge it if you want to or, you know, just, just leave it alone. The odds of you actually seeing that are pretty, pretty bad because it'll be on the, you know, on the side of the figure right about there. Uh, actually, I'll... Do this so you guys can actually see it. If you have to figure it out there, you're not really going to see that. No big deal. But in the case of this kit, we have these ammo clips that actually connect to the front of the kit, right in the front skirt. Uh, and this front skirt right here, as a matter of fact. So let's put that there. Um, it goes like so. And this one goes on here like so. Great, right? Except for the fact that as you turn it around, oh, look at all that. What's that you say? That is how you fill this in, which brings us to tonight's kind of cool tip tutorial thing. So let's look at um, this piece right here, actually. Now look at this one. This one's already done. So this is the back of the ammo clip. Now, and as you can see, uh, on this, you have this big, um, let me get the focus in really quick. Maybe, come on camera, we can do this together. There we go. Uh, so you see the one on the uh, this side here, it's all hollow and nasty. Well, all of them were like that originally. And when those are on the kit, uh, as soon as you, it's, it's not even like you don't have to look for it. As soon as the kit was turned to its side, you could immediately see there's this big hollow piece right there. Now this actually plugs into the kit at that spot. So this piece here is fairly well obscured, but you could still see that hanging out the side. So I filled it in. Um, and it's nice, smooth surface. Uh, so when we prime that and paint over it, you won't even know it's there. And if you get in there and actually start, you know, really getting nitpicky, you'll notice that maybe it's not, uh, you know, it has no uh, texture like the front there. But at a cursory glance, it'll it'll appear just fine. It'll mostly be in shadow, and it won't, it just won't look nearly as bad um, as it did previously. Now, uh, this is a trick that you can do with just a simple putty application. So in this case, I uh, took out my, my good friend uh, Vallejo um, water-based putty, uh, acrylic putty, acrylic resin actually. And you'll notice it has a piece of duct tape on it because the foil tubing uh, sprung a leak uh, the other night. So I had to clog that up somehow. But this is actually really easy to find, completely non-toxic, which is one of the things I like about it. And unlike a lot of putties, a lot of putties being, um, you actually have to uh, thin them with uh, either lacquer thinner or acetone. Uh, when you put it on there to, to actually get the surface on it, you have to, it becomes very hard. You have to smooth it out with sandpaper or, or, or something like that or a chisel or whatever you want to use. This stuff is extremely soft even when it's fully cured. Um, it doesn't make it the most sculptable or durable thing. It's good for smilling, uh, smilling, filling in small cracks. Um, but it's perfect for what we want to do here. So this piece is actually, this is one that I filled in last night. Now, if we take a look at it, uh, it looks pretty awful. Actually, it looks looks like a blurry, out of focus mess right now. Um, there we go. So it looks pretty awful. Uh, kind of splodged it in there, and it's it's pretty nasty. But that's okay, because this stuff is so soft and so easy to work with. Uh, what we can do now is easily cut this down and create that nice, smooth surface. So this is uh, this is the result of about um, this is two layer application. And it was over a period of two days because I waited a day in between. You could wait less, but I wasn't in a hurry. I do it night before you go to bed, wake up, go to work the next day. By the time you get home, the first layer is done. Then you do the second layer, repeat. Uh, so now we're on. Uh, this is this is ready to rock. The reason you do it in two layers is um, very simple. The first time you put it down, you're going to get it nice and flush, and you're actually going to fill it in much like much like we have here. So the results going to be very similar to this. But when it dries, it's actually uh, the, the, it's going to shrink quite a bit, and you'll actually get a concave effect uh, on the empty piece. 
So that's why we come back after that first one is dried and then we do a second coat and by then you end up with this uh, above the surface. And it being uh, above the surface is exactly what we want out of it because that gives us a basis to work with. My camera just, uh, yeah, boy. You want to get mad at it, but then it does something like that where it comes into perfect focus. Anyway, yeah, you want to get above the surface. That way it gives us something to work with. So all you do, take your hobby knife. In this case, I like using uh, just a chisel tip uh, X-Acto. Um, you can use really whatever you want. I just prefer this. It just makes it a lot easier. And what you want to do is just kind of find the edge of the plastic. Okay, We don't want to gouge the plastic, so you don't have to go crazy. And remember, this is very soft, so it'll go nice and easy. So then we just kind of start working our way down and don't need to apply a ton of pressure. You don't want to because you really want to avoid gouging the plastic. So we're going down, going down there and boom. So there's the first layer. Just toss that aside. Don't need it. So you can see we're already uh, really uh, taking form there. Uh, I mean, if you were so inclined, you could call that good. Granted, we have the inside one to cut down still. So we'll do that really quick, get a better look at it. Uh, so same thing here. This one's a little more difficult of a cut because there's uh, it's sitting just below the previous one, but not a big deal. Um, as with anything in this hobby, take your time, plan your move, and minimize your mistakes. So there's that. That one's a, it's a little stuck in there. That's okay. And do a little bit more trimming on that. There we go. That'll be nice. All right. Again, because that inside one's not going to be seen nearly as much as that outside one. Okay. So now you see we're, we're, we're closer than ever to having a nice, uh, smooth surface. Um, so just do that a couple more times just to get that down there. I'll just do this outside clip uh, just to show you. There. And just get that last little bump right at the end that guy. And what I'm running into here is that there's actually a little ridge right there at the end, the end of the clip. So I'm going to go up to the edge, not putting a ton of pressure on it, stop, turn my knife, and then just go straight down. And what that'll do is that'll allow the putty to actually take on the shape of that, uh, that ledge. That wasn't the best cut. The other one turned out much better, but I wasn't doing it live on camera, so that makes sense. All right, so let's uh, get that guy down. It's as much fun as watching paint dry. Just scrape it down, and then you can take some final things and just kind of give it a good scrape. And what you're left with is a beautiful, gorgeous, smooth, and filled ammo clip. So now when you see it from the side, you're not going to get a big face full of empty. This guy's ready to run. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you uh, found this useful in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and it helps show just how easy uh, it can be to get great results with not a lot of work, just a little bit of thinking. And now when we turn our model kit around, people aren't going to say, well, that is terrible. You didn't fill those clips in. Now you can just be like, aha, I did perfect. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, that was lame, not really funny. Uh, as always, if you dig the video, be sure to like and subscribe and check us out at modelkitreviews.com for other tutorials and fun information. Thanks for watching.